Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will explain and demonstrate how to configure a dual connected Polycom RMX video bridge for use with Avaya Aura 6.0 and higher. The purpose for this configuration is to enable high definition video conferencing between SIP and H323 endpoints in the Avaya Aura environment. And the concept we'll be using to administer this configuration is that our H323 endpoints will talk to the RMX using an H323 trunk, and our SIP endpoints will likewise talk to the RMX using a SIP trunk between the RMX and Session Manager. So just briefly, I'd like to give you a quick overview of what we'll be administering today in this video. First of all, we have three numbers we're dealing with. The first is the RMX lead phone number. This is the number that any station, whether it's SIP or H323, will dial to reach the RMX. The next two numbers there are the phone numbers for our individual stations. And as you can see, we have one SIP station that's 555-2000 and one H323 station that's 555-3000. Lastly, we just want to mention that we'll be using a feature in Communication Manager that's known as ARS partitioning to essentially route calls destined for the RMX over one of two different trunk groups. For our SIP stations, we'll route calls over the SIP trunk group in Communication Manager. And for our H323 stations, we'll route calls destined for the RMX over the H323 trunk. So let's start off by looking at how we configure Communication Manager for this dual connect environment. First, we'll take a look at the licensed features that are required in Communication Manager to enable this functionality. We do that by looking at the Display System Customer Options form. On page two, we'll find the maximum number of video capable stations as well as the number of SIP trunks available to us. Both of those are required. Then on page three, there's an important feature here to enable this functionality called ARS AAR partitioning that does need to be enabled. Now on page five, there's an optional feature called time of day routing that can also be enabled, but again, this feature is optional. If any of these features are not enabled on your system, you should contact your Avaya sales representative to acquire a license that does enable them. As I mentioned previously, we're going to be configuring two separate trunk groups. One will be an H323 trunk group and the other will be a SIP trunk group. You can see both of those listed as I've already created them on this communication manager. But let's take a look at each individually, starting with the H323 trunk group. You'll notice on the H323 trunk group, this is the actual signaling group for that trunk, we have video enabled both priority and IP video are enabled. And we're connecting directly from the communication manager Procker or the processor ethernet interface to the far end RMX. And the RMX is actually the signaling IP address of the RMX. And you'll notice too that the near end and far end listen ports are both the default of 1720. Now let's take a look at the SIP signaling group. Again, we have IP video enabled, as well as priority video. Priority video is optional in both cases. We also are pointing from the Procker in this case to Session Manager because this, this is a SIP trunk and Session Manager will be doing the actual routing to the RMX for us. So this is the same SIP trunk that are, is used by all of the SIP stations within CM to communicate with each other and other SIP endpoints. Now what we'll do is take a look at the route patterns for these trunks. So we're going to create two route patterns, one for H323 video routing, which is our route pattern number one. And you see that we've listed trunk group number one as our only trunk group on that route pattern. Now we'll look at route pattern number three, which is our SIP trunk. And again, this same route is used for routing all SIP calls to Session Manager. There's no difference now what we'll do is take a look at our AAR analysis in Communication Manager. This is the table that we're using to route our calls out of CM to the RMX. And as you can see, I have an entry there for 555-6999, which is our phone number for the RMX. 
Something no uh, special you'll notice about this entry is that instead of using a single route pattern, we're actually using what's known as a partition route index. So that's why you see under route pattern the label P1. Now let's take a look at the partition route table, which is where that index is defined. So we'll look at partition route table one. You'll notice that on the left is our column for the route index. Remember on the previous screen we looked at, it was set to partition route index one. The next two columns are the partition group numbers. These partition groups are essentially the group that your stations would be assigned to individually. And you notice that partition group one actually points to route pattern number three. Partition group two points to route pattern one. Therefore, any stations in partition group one would route across trunk group or route pattern three, which points to trunk group three. Any stations in partition group two would route across route pattern one, which points to trunk group one. Now that we have our routing configured, let's look at how a station would be assigned to one of those partition group numbers. First, let's take a look at our SIP station, 555-2000. You'll notice that this station does have video enabled. You'll also notice that it's assigned to class of restriction, otherwise known as core, as you see it in the upper right-hand corner there, number one. The core is what enables you to assign a station to a specific partition group. So let's take a look at core number one and find out what partition group this station is assigned to. You notice that in this class of restriction, there is a partition group number. Now, if your si communication manager system has time of day routing enabled, instead of saying partition group number here, it may actually say time of day table. Either is fine. They both enable you to assign this station, which is assigned to this core, a specific partition group number. So again, if we look at our partition table, partition group number one is assigned to use route pattern number three. And route pattern number three uses trunk group number three, which if you remember, is our SIP trunk group. Now let's take a look at our H323 station. This station is assigned class of restriction two. And again, it does have IP video enabled. In this case, it's actually an IP soft phone. So the IP video option is a little bit different, but either will work. Let's take a look at core two to find out which partition group this is assigned to. As you can see there, it's using partition group two, which if we look at our table again, shows us that we are using trunk group number one, or better yet, route pattern number one. Let's look at route one and find out which trunk that's using. So this is our H323 route and our H323 trunk. And that's it for Communication Manager. So let's take a look at the Polycom RMX configuration. Now what we'll do is take a look at the Polycom administration that's required for this dual connect configuration. The very first place we want to look here in the Polycom RMX Manager is under the Administrator menu and the option that says System Information. Once we click this, it brings up a nice dialog box for us. And the very important thing to look for here in this box is under the section that says Polycom Partners. It is absolutely vital to this configuration that that list Avaya. If that does not list Avaya, then you need to contact your Polycom sales rep in order to attain the license key that is needed for this configuration. Next, what we'll do is look under the Rarely Used menu there and we'll find the IP network services option. And what we have is an existing IP network services option we're going to look at the properties for. If this were a brand new RMX, you would likely have to configure one. But we'll click, right click that option and select properties to view the wizard. The wizard is the same whether it's a new or existing. The first thing you want to check you and make sure is that the IP network type is set for both H323 and SIP. Next, you select the gatekeeper option from the menu on the left. This is your H323 configuration. Primarily here on this menu, you need to verify that there is a primary gatekeeper assigned. 
That should be the IP address of your communication manager, processor, Ethernet interface, or a CLAN. You also need to make sure that the MCU prefix is specified. This MCU prefix should match the phone number that you entered in your AAR table in communication manager. For in our case, that's 555-6999. And that's really all there is to configuring H323 for the RMX. Now let's take a look at what is needed to configure the SIP for the RMX. We'll first find SIP parameters under the menu on the left. Once we choose that, we need to make sure that we have a specific SIP server specified. And in this case, since we're not using a Microsoft SIP server, we just choose generic for the SIP server type. The registration refresh really is not important for us because the RMX is set up as a SIP trunk, not a, an endpoint that registers with Session Manager. Also, it's important to either choose TCP or UDP from the transport type. Now, we do need to add our Session Manager as a SIP server. So that's what we have here is our Session Manager SIP entity IP address that we're assigning the SIP IP address there, the server IP address. Our domain is our SIP domain that Session Manager uses. And the port is 5060, which is what our Session Manager is connecting to the RMX using. And we'll take a look at the entity link in Session Manager in just a moment. The next section there is regarding the outbound proxy configuration. And this is also required for the, uh, the dual connect configuration. We need to make sure that we again specify the session manager SIP entity IP address as well as port 5060 for that configuration. And that's it for the RMX administration. Let's take a look now at the system manager and session manager configuration. All we really need to do here is define a SIP entity for the RMX. In this case, we point the SIP entity to the signaling IP address of the RMX. Below that, we specify that the type of SIP entity is other. We also set the SIP link monitoring to disabled, since the RMX does not support that feature. We also need to make sure that Call Admission Control and Shared Bandwidth Manager are both disabled for the RMX. Now we're ready to build our SIP entity link. You can see that I've already filled out these fields, but essentially all we need to do is give it a name, and we can name it anything we like. We can then assign SIP Entity 1 as our session manager. The protocol does need to be TCP or UDP, depending on what we set in the RMX. Our SIP Entity number 2 should be the RMX, and the far end port should be 5060. The connection policy also does need to be trusted for this SIP Entity link. Once we commit this, we've essentially built our SIP trunk between Session Manager and the RMX. Now we can simply build a routing policy to route our 555-6999 phone numbers through Session Manager across to that SIP entity, the RMX. Congratulations! At this point, you have a configured Polycom RMX for dual connect to both the SIP Session Manager and the H323 Communication Manager. You've also successfully configured SIP stations to dial the RMX over the SIP trunk and H323 stations to dial the RMX over the H323 trunk. Now you should be able to establish high-definition video conference calls between your SIP and H323 video endpoints. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.